Hello, church. I want to share a story, one of my favorites, my call to ministry. I was directing the children's choir here at Light of the World Christian Church in Indianapolis. I had spent a lot of years in lay ministry, but that Palm Sunday in 1996, I heard the Spirit in a way that I just could not ignore any longer. After years of resisting, I realized I had to shift my focus and follow that call. Thankfully, my husband Walter was right there beside me on the journey. I grew up in church. My grandfather, the Reverend Noel Horde, was a progressive Baptist preacher in Terre Haute, Indiana, where he was a community leader, an ecumenical partner, and a role model for college students who wanted church to be relevant to the times. In fact, when I was ordained in 2003, right here at the light, I was privileged to wear his robe. The congregation I serve in Downers Grove, Illinois, is a beautiful example of having a vital heart for mission. We are not all of one race or economic background, but we are called to be the presence of Christ in our community. The congregation sponsors a back-to-school fair each summer, hosting over 700 with supplies, haircuts, health services, food, and fun to get ready for the school year. Living out my call to ministry has taught me a lot. I've learned that acknowledging a problem is not the same thing as working it out together. Our willingness to journey together in love, committed to justice as the people of God, in spite of tensions, despite differences, and despite our own human faults, can be a powerful witness. If we can hold one another in community, it just might be possible that the world will see a powerful example of God's love. This is not an easy vision. It will also take the best of what God can do in and through us. It is a beautiful, gritty, necessary vision that we must pursue, empowered by the love of God, led by the example of Jesus Christ, grounded in the Word of God, and guided by the Holy Spirit. We will need to learn how to have difficult conversations, to go beyond the standard training sessions, to sit with one another, be uncomfortable at times, and learn how to hear one another fully, to place ourselves in one another's shoes and honor each other's identity and lived experiences. Imagine what a blessing we can be if we can face this challenge and model this work before the world. We can continue to build an inclusive church where all are welcome to God's table fellowship and service. And with faithful stewardship of our resources, we will engage in decisions together, focused on the community in which we all hold equal standing before God and one another. An intergenerational church allows us all to benefit from the joy and wisdom of each phase of life. Supporting families as they seek to build spiritual foundations for their children is imperative. Engaging, respecting, and leveraging the wisdom of our elders on whose shoulders we stand is necessary as we move forward together. And at our heart, vital congregations are the key to our future. We will continue to plant new churches. We will fold the tent when necessary, but also open the flaps so that new voices and ideas can come alongside existing congregations. We need members with the heart of a planter. We all need to serve our congregations, realizing that we are building and serving not for ourselves, but for those who will come after us, seeking God, seeking spiritual connection, seeking community. Church, this is an exciting time of exploration and renewal for disciples. We can hold fast to what is good, but also reimagine our future together. And I look forward with great joy to working alongside you as partners in ministry.